Yankee and the Brit, the RTM Radio Network on a Saturday night. So let's get up tight and out of sight. It's Mike Call here. We got Mike Call on the phone. Hello, Mike Call. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Hey, what's hey. going on, mister? How y'all doing? Doing all right, man. What about you? All got- right. Great to be on your show. We've had all kinds of crazy things. Storms here this week. Or I internet you cut off. <laughs> Been off and on. And uh, I got my partner here, John Blakeman, with me. He can say hello and plays with me. Put him on there. Hello. How y'all doing? Hey. We're doing all right, man. You guys are sounding a little excited tonight. You having a good time over there? Oh, yeah, yeah. Plain old, good old Saturday night in Kentucky, so we're having fun. Oh! We're at, playing a little music today and uh, just working on songs and stuff. That's what we do around here. We just sit around, me and Mike sit around and, and try to work on songs and come up with new music. You know, that's what we do. Nothing like life in the bluegrass. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Part of, sometime. Come see us in the bluegrass. What part of Kentucky are you in? Uh, Lexington. Oh, 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 horse ranches and beautiful blondes. And lots of bourbon. All the bourbon you can drink. <laughs> I thought that was in Tennessee. Uh, it's there too, but it's it's Kentucky's where the bourbon comes from. Oh, no, it's all good. Can I ask, why would you call it the bluegrass? Uh, the grass in Kentucky is just a particular color. It's a very, very green type of grass that almost, it's so green it almost has a bluish hue Ooh. to it. It's beautiful. So that's just, well, no, it's just a term that they come up with, you know, for, for the Kentucky, the very lush Kentucky grass, they call it bluegrass. Now you're going to have to take a picture of the random bluegrass now, <laughs> just for me. <laughs> It's really good this time of year. You know, it's springtime, and there's no more uh, there's no more beautiful place in in the world than Kentucky in the springtime. Everything's starting to bloom right now. Everything's greening up, and it's just it's just a beautiful place to be in the in the springtime. Oh my God, I love going through Kentucky. What a beautiful place! Yeah, we, you ain't kidding. We feel the same about Texas right now. Every all the leaves on the trees are all fresh and new, and the grass is green. Everything's green. Everything is so. Oh, the grass is always green. greener on the other side. Ethel, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I love Texas. I've been across Texas. I actually, uh, in the 80s, I actually lived in Phoenix. So I've crossed uh, Texas a couple of times, and I, I really enjoyed it. I loved it. Well, let's get a couple questions here. Where, uh, where, uh, who am I, who's uh, Mike? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I'm getting I let John talk. He's better talking than I am. What, uh, where do you get all your inspiration for your songs at? They just come out of your head? They come out of the farm. Out of the farm. Out of where? The farm, the farm where he lives. I live on a farm here. I've lived here all my life. Oh, uh, nice. Uh, sh- come through my family. It's been in our family for about 100 years. That's the only way I can explain it. You know, I live probably uh, eight miles from a big city and probably a mile from the nearest uh, little town. I'm, I'm like kind of the beginning of the country before the suburb, suburban Lexington, Kentucky gets out here. So you're outside the circle anyways. Yeah, yeah. I'm... I'm uh, Pretty close. There's a lot of creeks out here, a lot of woods, uh, uh, a lot of hills. Deer, yeah, deer, turkey. It's just it's just a beautiful aura, you know. And I think that's where I get it from. You know, you it's in the air. It is. I agree. You uh, still is. you still farm the place? Yeah, we we farm it. Awesome. Wow. I had a lot of farm life when I, I was young. I for years, you know, till the fences got bad and I couldn't. Have, you know, couldn't keep up with them. Soybeans, different things here. Nice. Yeah, I love yeah. the farm life, man. That's Farm life's good for everybody. Good fresh air. So tell us about your sinkhole song. I know you said it was to do with your okay. farm. Yeah, sure. That's a song that uh, me and John wrote. Uh, we do in our band, our real electric band. And uh, there's actually a sinkhole on the back of this farm where I live. And it's, it's, huge, it's humongous. It's, you know, it's been there for years. And there's trees going around it, and it's it's pretty deep. So that's kind of where I got the idea for the song, you know, using it as a metaphor. Do you, oh. Can you swim in it? No, no, you can't swim in it. Oh, it's not full of water then, no, not that kind. No, it's, you know, this, this country where I live is pretty close to the Kentucky River. Oh. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of caves around this area. It's, there's a lot of limestone and... It's kind of like karst, they call it that, you know, geologically. Right. I was going to ask if there was a, a cave down in the bottom of it or anything. Oh, I'm sure it is. Yeah, there's no doubt. Oh, you ain't gone down went, in it yet? I went down as far as I can go in it before, and you can. there's a pretty good hole in there, and it looks like the hole goes into affinity. Wow. How cool is that? So, 
got to be, yeah, you got to be kind of careful. But it's probably about, oh, I don't know, it's probably 40, 40, 50 feet deep. I, say, I say get a parachute and go for it. <laughs> I was just about to say you can go and explore it just for the Yankee and the Brit show, can't you? You can take your yeah. phone and do a live video. Are, are, are you doing a live video? I'll do a live video for y'all and go back there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got you. Okay. Are yeah, you uh, go back and play, play fiddle and stuff and, and, and do crazy stuff. But no, you know, the, the inspiration, you know, I came out of, uh, I started playing the fiddle when I was 10 years old in school. And, uh, and then I got, like so many people, I got interested in sports and stuff and girls or whatever, you know. And that kind of took a back seat to it. And then when I got about, when I got about nine, I didn't start playing guitar until I was about 19, 18 or 19. And then I thought, man, I should have stuck with that fiddle. But Charlie Daniels is really popular, you know. I could have, if I'd stuck with that fiddle, I thought, man, I might have been pretty good. Yeah, but I can tell you got some serious rosin on that bow because you sure know how to push it. That sounds good. Well, I, I appreciate that. You know, I played a lot of bluegrass and, and a lot of guys, and this guy here playing with me, his uncle, uh, he doesn't play fiddle. John doesn't, but he plays a lot of instruments. But I'll let you tell him, John, about your music. Yes. Uh, well, me and Mike, when we first met, we actually were introduced by his, his cousin. We were all in a bluegrass band. We started playing bluegrass together. And uh, even though that group, particular group has kind of fallen apart since then, me and Mike just kind of clicked, you know, together as musicians and songwriters and stuff, and we've we've stuck together all this time. Me and him's been together now for like 17 years. Wow. And, yeah, we've played a lot of music together, but we both come from a background. We both have old-time musicians in our family. He has somebody in his family that was a, an old-time country music musician that was fairly famous, and I come from uh, the side where I have an old-time fiddler. My great-uncle was a, a fairly famous old-time fiddler, and uh, so we both have the music in us, and we we both, and we get a lot of inspiration yeah, from right. from being back here and, you know, being down on the creeks and in the woods, and when we play together, we just, we, we just get inspired by that, you know, we're able to come up with song ideas from you know, usually they're based with just a fiddle and, and an acoustic guitar, and sometimes they turn into, you know, electric songs, you know, almost rock, you know, rock-type songs, but usually they're they're born on the acoustic guitar and, and the fiddle and stuff like that, so a lot of times that's where it comes from. Yeah, they sound great. Do uh, you guys, uh, you sometimes just sit around and just jam and just see what comes up? All the time. I mean, is what we've been doing today. I mean, we just, we, we, a lot of times somebody just starts playing something and you don't even know why and the next person comes in and then it becomes, you know, a couple hours later you've got a song, you know. A couple of these songs sound like you've been in a studio before? We have to a degree. We have, we haven't recorded in any major studios, but we've recorded in some local studios and, and things like that and we're actually working on doing analog recording is what we're focusing on. Now, actually out of the house with, we're going back to the old analog quarter inch tape machines and trying to go completely analog because we just enjoy the sound of you know the 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 70s type sound 60s and 70s type analog recordings are so warm and so lifelike and they they still sound fresh today whereas you know a lot of stuff just just doesn't have that quality exactly we're trying to go back and revisit that yeah i saw when you posted that picture of that reel to reel i think i made a comment about why don't you just send that over here to me (laughs) (laughs) yeah we plan on getting a lot of mileage out of that i've actually actually just picked up a couple of really nice recording microphones and stuff so we're we're really getting ready to start putting that thing to good use we've got a lot of uh lots of song ideas and we've got lots of tape and we plan on filling them up are you uh guys going to be doing a facebook live tonight uh i don't know we did earlier we did a little bit earlier probably okay. a, a 30 minutes or so yeah we earlier. was uh we was wanting to listen to that and um the for some reason we just cannot watch these live videos they just cut off every few seconds and we just happened to catch mike mentioning about the yankee and the brit show we just yeah. thought about oh, two yeah. seconds but, of it and then it we then it cut off so yeah my pleasure I, I really enjoy being on here you know i've only been doing the facebook uh, live for probably i don't know a couple months you know you know a lot of these guys you know have certain times and stuff and i, I try i had to try to figure out how to do it i'm still trying to figure out how to do it when, when i do the solo shows I try to do them, you know, 
like I would do if I'm playing in a bar or something. Because right. I played clubs for years. Right. You getting a lot of followers that way? Yeah, quite a few. You know, I'd, I'd like to say, can I give some thanks on here? Sorry, can uh, you? Say that again. Well, you're going to have a couple guests on in a couple weeks that really helped me out a lot. Uh, helped me get started. Uh, I'd like to do a shout out to Mr. Gary Reagan. He was, uh, he was the one that kind of inspired me to start, you know, going back and doing some country because... If you listen to our music, you can tell we're kind of a mixture, real electric band, you know, bluegrass and country and rock. But I came from a traditional uh, country music background myself before I even met John and all these guys. I played quite a bit. Uh, you probably, I, I don't know if you've ever heard of John Michael Montgomery, who became a country, country oh, star. Oh, of course. Absolutely. Yeah, well, I used to play. I was friends with him and his band, like in my 30s. And I hung out with him. That's how I kind of got started in the music business. And when he left this particular bar that he was playing at Lexington, Kentucky, along with his brother, they chose me to take his place. And that's kind of how I got started. You know, it was just straight country and doing top 40. Of course, back then it was, you know, Garth Brooks and, and stuff. But I was always kind of geared back toward the traditional stuff. You know, the, the Vern Gosden, the George Jones, the Merle Haggard. Uh, you know, people like that. All the real country music. Yeah, that's that's really that's really my root and really my love. And then I got with this fabulous musician here, John Blakeman, and he taught me how to rock and roll. Hey, so, uh, Mike. Yes. Uh, Calvin Blanco says, uh, "What's up, brother?" Yeah, Calvin. Calvin is another friend. I want to say a shout out to Calvin, to Bobby Johnson, and Gary Reagan. And Miss Beverly Gosden Knight, because she was the first person that I met on Facebook that was associated with this country movement. And I want to thank all of them. And I want to say hi to Jackie and Annette and, and all the people that follow me when I'm playing. Walter Bennett and uh, uh, Tammy Bennett and so many people that, that, that show up here every time that I try to do this crazy stuff. Did you say Walter Brennan? Walter Bennett, I think, is his name. <laughs> I'm a Walter Brennan fan. I love that guy. Oh, uh, that's the old country guy, isn't it? He, uh, oh, you've probably seen him around quite a number of times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of that's uh, like. Hey, uh, man, I want to say. Uh, I want to say happy birthday to you tomorrow. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> well, Mike. I uh, busted in my own trap. Mike, you yeah, have to sing you it go. with me. You have to sing happy birthday to my husband with me. Are you up for it? Oh, boy. I'm up for it. You'll have to give me the guitar, John. <laughs> is, is now the time? <laughs> I wouldn't worry about your guitar. I'll probably wreck it. If I do that, you got to promise to play Love Shack sometime tonight. All right. Oh. We'll do it. I'll load it up right now. <laughs> just happy for you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Randy, happy birthday to you. That's the clean version. We won't do the honky tonk version. <laughs> what was that song that you mentioned in the Facebook about singing? And I had no clue what you was talking about. About Ohio? Oh yeah, yeah. You want to hear some of that? Yes, yes, please. Because I'm sorry, I had no clue what you were talking about at all. It went right over my head. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Well, John's going to have to sing some harmony with me. Oh, doing? come on then, John. John's going to have to, John, I'm going to put John on the spot here. You just want to look, you know, you don't, you're going to know this. This is the ultimate uh, Neil Young protest song. What is it?
Hey, that sounds all right, man. Bravo. Mike Hall singing live to us on the Yankee on the Bridge show. Got to love Neil Young. He's a train fan, too. That's what I like about him. <laughs> He's a big Lionel Railroad man. Yeah, we come from that. You know, Neil Young done a lot of country music, and uh, that really pushes me to sing that because I like to sing the real low songs, you know, the Merle Haggard stuff. But John's got a high voice. And, uh, you know, we're working up some country harmony stuff and uh, seeing how it goes. You'll have to try some Lance Stinson. I've never heard of him. Oh, my gosh. Oh, no. You haven't heard of Lance Stinson. Oh, my. No. Better look him up. Yes. <laughs> is that traditional country? Yeah, yeah. Some, some of it is and some of it's, but it's none of that new nasty stuff. It's all good stuff. Is That's it? one of the interesting things about, about me and Mike. Like Mike said, he comes from a very, a very traditional country background, you know, George Jones and Waylon and Merle Haggard and everything, whereas I came from, when I was young, I was listening to rock and roll and didn't really have any interest in country at all other than, than Buck Owens and the Buckaroos. If I could run away today and play with the Buckaroos, that's what I'd do, you know. Oh, yeah, I hear you. But uh, I was always, you know, listening to the, the old groups like Free and Cream and, you know, the Pink Floyd and... You know, all the stuff from the 70s and stuff, that was what I was raised on. So when me and Mike started playing together, we just kind of uh, just kind of rubbed off on each other. He made me start playing country, and I made him start playing rock, you know, and we just kind of met in the middle. It's funny you say that because, you know, in my house when I was a little kid, Mom had uh, Jim Reeves and uh, Gail Garnett and all these old country albums, and I got turned on to uh, Van Halen and all that in the 70s and uh, right on through the 80s, and then also, like you said, Chris. Cream, the Who, the Guess Who, and an endless list of all that rock. But uh, I went trucking, and I got in a truck, and I became a countryman, and I've been hanging in <laughs> with it ever since, man. I love it, you know. And it's funny, I grew up with country, and yet I'd forgot all about it till I got uh, in that truck, and a trucking buddy of mine that lived up the street from me, he uh, turned me on to all kinds of stuff, and eventually it, it just kind of clicked, and it's like, hell yeah, this is good stuff. Well, my mom always liked to listen to country like Willie Nelson and she was a big Ray Charles fan and uh, you know some of the country stuff he did but I had an older sister and when my older sister was gone I would sneak into her bedroom and I would go through her albums in the early 70s <laughs> and I would play all these like forbidden albums you know all this stuff from Bowie and the Pink Floyd and all this stuff I wasn't supposed to be hearing it was it just really really clicked with me I thought wow this is just like some magical for, forbidden fruit you know that I'm not supposed to be hearing and it just really really stuck with me Did you ever now as I've gotten a little older I can I can appreciate from playing with Mike I appreciate you know the country stuff much more than I ever did before it's kind of kind of grown on me you know some of the stuff like the Merle Haggard stuff we we really enjoy doing those kind of songs you know do you ever tell your sister you did that oh sure yeah yeah she she gets a big kick out of it she she thinks it's really funny but I'm sure she always thought when she came back home you know Who's been who's been sleeping in my bed? You know who's been going through my albums? You know, <laughs> and I'm sure she knew it wasn't your mom doing it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But so I got to listen to a lot of different stuff. You know, I got to I got to listen to a wide variety of music, and and that's one thing I think is the problem with a lot of musicians these days is they only listen to one type of music. You know, if you're a bluegrass fan, don't just listen to bluegrass. Listen to everything that's going on out there. If you're just a country fan, listen to country, but by all means, you know, listen to some of the other things that are going on out there, too, and it, it rubs off on you. You know, you, you get fresh ideas, and you, and you get... You get to see fresh directions for fresh songs, you know, and that's what music needs so much. It can't just, we all enjoy the traditional stuff, but we're looking for new directions to take it in, and you have to have that in music. Either one of y'all have any uh, any other family members that uh, play music or instruments? Oh, I wish you'd pay attention. Why? They were we go only through talking that about it earlier, yeah. I missed that part, You I never guess. pay attention in class. What? Can you tell us again? <laughs> I guess I'm asking, like, Dad or Mom or any of those. I didn't hear any of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, uh, he was asking questions. Yeah, my mom played piano and, and sang, and uh, my great-grandfather was a fiddle player. That um, I heard. Yeah, I, I have his fiddle, actually, that I play sometimes. I have, a, I have another cousin of mine. He's distant third or fourth. He, 
he played with Keith Whitley. He was Keith Whitley's lead guitar player. Uh, wow. Keith was uh, uh, and he, uh, I think he plays with Mo Pitney now. Boy, there's some good stuff there too. We play Mo once in a while. Larry likes to listen to Mo Pitney. Yeah, I don't, I don't see Lou very much. He's, uh, he, he's, you know, he lives down in Nashville. He played with Brooks and Dunn. He's probably a third cousin of mine, but he, he taught me some stuff. You know, when I was trying to, you know, figure out what I wanted to do back in the nineties, he taught me some a, a lot of Keith songs on the guitar. You know. And it was kind of neat getting it, learning how to do, you know, acoustic stuff directly from the guy that plays it. I remember the first time I went in his house and uh, uh, he picked up the guitar and did I'm No Stranger to the Rain. I thought, oh, my God, that sounds just like the record. I'll never be able to play that good. There you go. Either one of you guys have any other hobbies? What's your, what's your hobby, John? John's hobby is collecting guitars and amps. <laughs> he, is, he, is like the, he is like the Jeff Cook of the band of Alabama. John plays everything. He plays his guitar, bass, mandolin, good. Uh, he even play, he even drew the sitar out in here. He'll ask me to write a song or something and, and, and come up with something. And uh, sometimes we'll take these songs, like the other side, that one that I did, and we'll put like three or four different instruments in it, and it, it, it'll be the same song, but it'll sound totally different. You can tell them what you do, John. Uh, we just try to we try to keep things as organic as we can, you know. Just for instance, Mike was playing a song about a week or so ago, and I just said, man, I just I really hear a dobro, just yeah, a, a, a dobro yeah. on that. And even though, I'm, you know, I'm not a... a very good dobro player I, I own a dobro and i brought it out and and we sit there and started playing on it and it just it just really really meshed good with what he was playing you know and sometimes that's just how you have to do you just have to experiment with different things and and that's kind of my i'm a musician but i'm also a collector of instruments and I, i'm just fascinated with stringed instruments and i probably own 70 guitars uh not counting basses banjos mandolins pedal steel lap steel, sitar, fiddles, just pretty and, and old amplifiers. I love old amp, old tube amplifiers. Ah, that's, that's quite a collection. Is, you know? That's quite a collection. What about you, Mike? Have you got any hidden talents? Yeah, I used to be a baseball player. I was a pretty good hitter. What happened with that? Not enough talent. That's, that's <laughs> I asked about hidden talents. <laughs> I thought it was—I thought it was pretty good. I could—I could still hit a baseball over 300 feet when I was 45, 44 years old. But that's probably it. <laughs> Yeah. What well, have you got to play for us tonight? I keep hearing you plinky plunky and on your thing over there. Oh, I'm just doing that because I'm nervous. Oh, oh I see. Nervous Nothing to be nervous about. We're as crazy as you are. <laughs> well, let's get to. Uh, I got some questions I want to ask you, and then we'll let you go, and uh, then you can uh, jump off of here, and I'll play your love shack for you because we just love to make noise. Oh, okay. All right. Either one of you can answer. I guess it doesn't make a difference. Uh, number one. What's your favorite word? Happy. What's your least favorite word? Sad. Alone. <laughs> <laughs> That's your own problem, you're alone. Mike, what, what turns you on? What turns me on? Good weather and blue skies with that chemtrails. What turns you off? Uh, people that don't understand music. John says to his is people that don't understand music. That's me, then. <laughs> you want people that don't, it. and what turns me off? People that don't, uh, people that are not into happy, because we're into happy and we're not into sad. That's <laughs> good, good, good answer. What sound do you uh, love? Oh, the fiddle. What sound do you hate? Uh, I don't like digital beat boxes. What's your favorite curse word? Uh, probably damn. <laughs> And the other answer? John. Oh, shucks. Oh, shucks? <laughs> shucks. I didn't know Americans said shucks. <laughs> uh, let's see. Number eight. What profession other than yours would you like to attempt? Hmm. Probably be a forester. Oh, that's not a bad idea. I could live out in the woods yeah. forever. Yeah, what? well, I have some woods on the farm here, and I have to actually do some forestry work sometimes. Yeah, if I never went into music, I would have liked to 
probably worked for the government and went into the forestry. Sorry, what's forestry? Taking care of the woods, oh. being out there, just making sure things are like they're supposed to be. That'd be cool. It's a lot yeah. more. There's more of a description than that, but that's the general basis. I, I was wanting to. I was seriously thinking about going to school for that in my twenties, but you know, I, I started working different odd jobs. I was a janitor. I worked for the post office. I've been a delivery boy, and and you know, all kinds of stuff. And I started actually. I started making more money playing music in my late twenties and thirties, and just. Uh, Plus farming, you know, I did that. What profession so, would you not like to do? What I not like to do, I wouldn't want to be a doctor, even though they make good money, or I wouldn't want to be a lawyer. I wouldn't want to be an accountant. Oh, I can relate. Last question. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? I'd like to hear him say, I love your music. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm your biggest fan. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had that answer before. <laughs> hey, but he's my, my biggest fan. He can't be your biggest fan as well as my biggest fan. Come on. Hey, I got I got a bluegrass joke for you. Bring it on. How many how many bluegrass musicians does it take to change a light bulb? I can't imagine. How many bluegrass musicians does it take to change a light bulb? <laughs> well, it takes four of them to complain and one to do the changing. <laughs> that's about right too <laughs> oh you guys are all right man well hey thanks a million for coming on man you guys <laughs> hey, it's our pleasure great friggin interview too man you guys uh, got it all together you sound like you know where you're going and what you're doing man keep it up how can people um, hear your music well i've got my page you know but we've also got a rural electric band page uh, that's what we go by when we play all three of us. We, we go by Rural Electric Band. So if we search Rural Electric Band, we'll find it? Yeah, you, you'll find it. You can find it on YouTube, and you can find it on Facebook. We've got a page. I think we've probably got 140 or 150 likes. Did I but, see it on the sound uh, SoundCloud, too? Yeah, yeah. That's my stuff. Uh, of course, I've just got everything on there. You know, when, when you're hearing, like, the song Sinkhole, you're, you're actually hearing all three of us on that one. The other stuff, you know, you're, you're hearing me do. Well, be careful yeah. when you type it in Google, guys, because you can also find Rural Electric Board, Bangladesh. Yeah. <laughs> Wrong country. <laughs> For some reason, that's not us. <laughs> no? <laughs> I think you would look mighty funny with a towel on your head. All right, guys. Thanks a million, man. We're going to throw this love shack on here. You switch over to the radio and give it a go, and uh, you can hear us make some noise. All right. Thanks, guys. Hey, thanks a million, man. Good luck with the Facebook thing, too. Are we still going to be on for what? Go ahead. Make it happen. Yeah, we still. You're going to have us on for, what, another 30 more minutes? No, we're out of here. we got to move along. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, man. It's been great being on here. Hey, I it's, thank you like I said, for, uh, man, it's nice having you guys. Uh, yeah. Good conversation. You got it all together, and that's the key to the whole thing. And good luck with the future. All right. Thank you. Good luck to you, and happy birthday, too. Ah, thanks again, man. Appreciate it. Thanks, Donna. We enjoyed it. Love you all. All right, love, bye. See you. you roll with the Yankee and the Britney RTM Radio Network. You understand me? 